Well, hi, thanks for joining me in my shop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace one of the capacitors that I already replaced. I'm going to take out the capacitor I put in. I'm going to put in this one. And this is about that uh, capacitor I put in the radio here, which is 50 times the size, five times, not 50, five times the size of what it should be according to the schematic and the capacitor that came out. But that's all I had at that time. Now I got one here. It's still not exactly right. It's not a 10. It's a 20. That's a lot better than a 50, I think. And as you know, if you watch my video, the uh, magic eye is not behaving quite the way you would expect. And that's led me to be suspicious about this large capacitor here, although I can't see how it would cause an influence. But in any case, I'm going to get it into more the range of the correct size uh, where it really needs to be. So. I'm going to just cut it away from here. And likewise, on the other side, I'm just going to cut it away. There's a, there's a close-up look here. <clears throat> This one, I have an alternate ground point here I'm going to use. <coughs> Instead of stretching all the way over to the far side way over here, I'm just going to come across to this point here. And I'm going to cover the positive terminal, the terminal with some voltage on it, or lead rather, not terminal, but lead. having a lot of trouble seeing what I'm doing here. Once again, you've got a great view on the camera, but... So I don't really have a lot of hope that this is going to fix the weird 
some behavior on the uh, magic eye. Okay, so at least I feel a little better, even if the radio is not going to operate a little bit better. Now, something else that's been troubling me here a little bit is my... Did I make this connection? I don't think so. I don't think I put this cord on. And what I'm seeing here is... If you look at it, I need some loose strands on this power terminal. And I just don't like little loose strands like that floating around. They're hard, hard to see. And uh, they're the kind of thing that'll generate a short circuit unexpectedly. And it's right on the power cord. So it would be up to my house fuse to interrupt a short at that point. And uh, some people might be mistaken to thinking that <clears throat> if you have a 15 amp fuse then you can't get any more than 15 amps. That's not true. You can draw like 15 amps for 20 seconds and they'll blow. And you can draw 20 amps for half a second. You can draw 100 amps through one of those things for a fraction of a second. I don't know exactly what the numbers are. I'm just kind of making those up. But the point is, what really restricts the fault current in a short circuit like that, what are you looking at here? Yeah, on a short circuit like, like this one, um, is your distribution, your power distribution transformer on the pole outside your house or down underground, and the uh, cable's bringing it to your house. And there's not much restriction there. so. Is 100 amps possible through a, a fault in a power cord for a brief mo moment? Yeah, sure. Depends on your situation. 100 might be a little high. 50 amps, easy. 50 amps makes a big boom. <laughs> it's big. And uh, so anyway, we're better off like that now. Okay, let's, uh, should we try the set again? Or I see another wax capacitor. Another wax capacitor right in there. Maybe we should get rid of that. <coughs> Here. This one looks like a special capacitor of some sort. I don't want to touch that one. But this one looks like an ordinary wax one. <clears throat> and it looks to be in pretty sad shape. Let's 
see what this is. Okay, so I'd say that says point oh five. Wow, it really looks like six in the camera here, doesn't it? Wow, it really looks like a six. But I assure you, it's a five. Point oh five. Okay. So we will use a uh, Chornon's coil technique here. because the situation is really quite ideal in there. can't really see it, can you, from there? Okay, good chance my camera's going to fall over, but for now it's okay. Let me just do a little focus on it. There. You can see the two leads sticking out. That's, that's what I'm aiming for. It's going to be a little hard to crush. There we go. Good. Okay. I see another paper one. In fact, when I look at all these, these ones here, these are all replacements done previously. You can tell from the joining. You know, there's a, a solder joint here, back part of the wire is covered. I mean, somebody cut the old one out and put this in. Now these are old enough now that even these are no longer reliable. So there's a good example of, uh, you know, uh, nothing is forever. 
So if someone, uh, actually I was looking at a uh, recapped stereo yesterday, uh, I wasn't here in my own shop, and someone had taken a 19, well I guess it would be a 19, maybe 1970s tube amplifier, and had replaced most of the capacitors in it, probably 60 capacitors, something like that. I've cut this one from this green wire. Green wire, remember that. And, uh, of course, it's not working properly. After replacing all those capacitors. And, uh, he's done some other things too. He replaced the output transformers. We have no idea why. And, uh, we had to tell him we can't work on his equipment. He doesn't have an original schematic. We have no idea what he's got going in there. So we told him we just couldn't work on it. Uh, too risky for us. So, uh, poor guy. Let that be a lesson to you. Uh, not, not saying the capacitors he changed caused the problem. He did all that work. Sometime later, a problem has developed of who knows what. And that's exactly it. Who knows what. Probably one of the capacitors he didn't re, uh, didn't replace, or maybe he introduced problems. We don't know. So anyway, here we are. Now I just cut this thing out and set it aside. Didn't look at it. What's with the big red band on it? It looks like something was taped over it. That's curious. Let me clean this up a little bit here. See what we got. Made in USA. In New York. There's the capacity reading right there. Oh, it's quite easy to see. Point zero zero five. What's this tape? This part guaranteed by Reed and Campbell. Darn it all. There's a guarantee on this. <laughs> i got to phone up Reed and Campbell and say, hey, give me another .005 capacitor, because uh, this one you guaranteed. <laughs> Who's Reed and Campbell? <clears throat> Never heard of them. So that's probably what that other capacitor with the red on it is. Hey, is Reed and Campbell a repair shop that some time ago put this capacitor in? along with this other one, and they wanted to mark the parts that they put in really so they could say when a thing breaks down, well that part's not the part we put in, because we put in this one with the red tag on it, it's okay, it's another part. Because you can imagine, you do this kind of work, you repair something, you give it back, a week later something else fails, what can you say? The person brings it back, hey, whatever you did, it didn't work, and there you are, and you're really in a spot trying to explain the situation. Point zero zero five. Zero five. Here we go. From the green.
There we go. Sometimes too many things to adjust here. Okay, so I'm working back on that cracked green wire you can see. Of course, I just put the camera exactly where I want to put my hand. Which happens a lot when I'm doing this kind of stuff. Because the uh, camera needs a clear, a clear place to sit. And often that clear place is the clear place I want to put my hands, which is why you see me sometimes struggling on what looks like something that should just go easy. Or I can't see it anymore, or I can't get the tool around it, or something like that, because you're watching. Once again, it's the fault of the viewer. Now, I have no reason, really, to think the capacitor I'm changing uh, was a problem. In fact, at some point, I've got all these capacitors I've removed from quite a few radios, the last few radios. I think I'm going to put them all through a test process. Uh, take an hour and just go through them all one at a time. And try to identify the condition they're in. And see if I am taking out a bunch of bad capacitors or... or not. Sleeve. Hey, isn't that a song? Green sleeves. Come on. Uh, making a few changes and we know there's an operational issue with the radio or it appears to be and that's with the magic eye so if the <coughs> magic eye begins to behave properly we won't know for sure which thing it was assuming it's not behaving properly right now As if you remember, it seemed to be closed all the time. Back in the day when, when the <coughs> these ones were being put in, these molded capacitors, the person putting them in, in their mind for sure, was I'm getting rid of these old, tired, probably paper capacitors, and I'm putting in these great molded ones, the latest thing. And it's turned out in the long run, these molded capacitors are unreliable. So, should I change all those? I don't think so. Um, 
I don't think there's any reason for me to do that at this point, unless we detect the problem with the way the radios are operating. Okay, well everything looks really good there. So I think we are ready to, to operate the radio again and see if, if anything's happened. See if we've made more problems for ourselves here. Hopefully not. Oh, guess what? I have the next radio to work on. It's a KL76, which means it's identical to this one here. So that's going to be three radios in a row I've done that are basically the same circuit. Hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. And apparently this radio works. It just needs a, a tune-up and a check-over. So maybe I'll be doing another one of these... Uh, Magic Eye wire jobs here. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna be able to test it without the speaker. And the, uh, I believe I have to also plug in the switch the uh, uh, push button system. So let me get that stuff.